um, congratulations on a fantastic episode of TV. Did either of you have a sense as you were making this that this episode was something special? And if so, when did that first hit for you? Evan, let's start with you. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I read the first... I, Not uh, this special, <laughs> but well, pretty no, special. No, this is crazy. Um, and thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, uh, yeah, uh, the first two episodes... I mean, I was a, a big fan of the game for a long, long time, and it was one of those things where I was always trying to get people to... <laughs> I see what oh, you look did, what I did there. Long, long time. <laughs> I, that was unintentional. But yeah... Um, I'd been sort of pitching this to people for years and trying to get people who didn't ha care about video games, just saying there's this really special story with these amazing characters, amazing soundtrack, it looks incredible. And I was sort of doing PR for this thing in like 2013. <laughs> um, so long, long, oh my God, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> a, a while ago. Uh, and, um, it really was like a dream job for me if ever this is going to be adapted to, to be involved. And I won't go through all the details of how I got the job, but it was pretty miraculous. And then, so lots of incredible things have happened by this point. I got sent the first four scripts. I read the first two, thought they were great. Um, uh, but so, sort of what I expected, a great version of what I expected, but the, uh, episode three, as this is, um, just knocked me out. I, I've never read a script like that before. Um, that made me cry. Like I, I just haven't had that experience before with a screenplay, um, and it really was all in there. Like I, I just cannot. All, all of these talks I've been doing about this episode, I'm, I'm. It's not sort of false modesty or anything like that to just put so much emphasis on how good that script was and how many of the details were in there. And so from that point, I knew there was this opportunity for, for not just a great adaptation of something I thought was already great, but something that may even break out of that into a whole new level of what I thought was was pretty special. Mm. And then as we began to, to, to prep it, it, it really became how do we how do we just honor this? How do yeah. we how do we make it the best version of how do of we not there? fuck up? How do we not <laughs> fuck it up? I mean that was the big job. Mm. Um, did that answer your question? I yeah. forgot the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the mission accomplished on not uh, screwing it up by the way. Thank uh, you. Congratulations. Um, was it a similar thing for you Peter in terms of the script level you really immediately knew okay this is something that we don't see very often. Yes. Um, yeah, the script said something to me. I, I, my journey, equally miraculous, because I thought there's no way I'll get an episode of The Last of Us. I knew it was coming. I just thought it'd go to other people. It always does. And then uh, a colleague, Rose Lamb, who'd worked with me on a show called Da Vinci's Demons, at the same time, inter interestingly, that the game Last of Us came out, mm. she's always tried to get me to work with her again. And I, I scrolled down, thought, well, what am I going to have to turn down this time? Mm. And it was The Last of Us. I was like, I'll do it, I'll, whatever it is. <laughs> and then they sent the script. Mm. And that's when I thought, wow. Um, and I didn't know anything else. They didn't send me one and two uh, or three. As it was, this was four. It's very complicated. Mm. But um, they didn't send me anything else, just this episode. And they said, are you interested? And of course, yes. And then met Craig and Neil for very brief, what felt like a very brief amount of time, and then I was, I was on a plane. Mm. <laughs> you had already, you had already arrived. <laughs> Amazing. Um, we are, of course, going to get into the Bill and Frank of this episode in a big way. But this episode begins with Joel and Ellie. What was it like working with Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, he's all right. Yeah, he's, he's all right. Um, only, Give me the only... dad, Peter. Give well, me the dad. No. One, one thing I think is vaguely interesting is the order of shooting this series mm. meant that they had shot episode one first um, and then we were up next. Yeah. So those scenes of Joel and Ellie at the beginning were actually in a way the first time that Pedro and Bella had been together doing so, scenes. Th yeah, um, they'd, they'd, they'd met, uh, he'd thrown her to the wall and uh, all the rest of it, she just sneered at him and that was it. Mm. Uh, so the episode two, uh, the zombie escape, oh, you can't say zombie, sorry. Um, <laughs> infected. We went infected. It. <laughs> no, it was a banned word. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Um, so yeah, that escape hadn't happened. And even then, that relationship is different. So they had to sort of back, think yeah. themselves backwards into it. And that was a thing. I mean, literally just standing there at the end watching that last bit, I saw more in her reaction to you know I don't, you know, when she says, you know I don't know who Linda Ronstadt is. And she's looking so, she's looking right up at him in a way she's never done in, t in the entire, so far. And it's like mm. we were saying, some people, and they will be nameless uh, because they'll be shot, um, 
who have complained that it doesn't move the story on far enough. If you think about the journey between the beginning and the end of episode three, but for them, and they're not on screen for half of it, it's, it's transformative. Yeah. And then when they get into four and five, which Evan also did, then they need to be. They need to be on the same team because they're going to get hit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Evan, the lighting in the scene where Ellie has to sort of go underground and dispatch that infected is incredible. Can you talk to me about crafting that scene and bringing that to life? Thank you. Um, the approach on this was, was, was everything was, was rooted in naturalism. It was, it was, a lot of the time, it was a game of how little can we do to, to, to ground this in as, as real and tangible a world as possible. So it, often it was a, a whole ton of equipment and lighting and stuff that we weren't using. <laughs> Turn more things off, do less, do less, do less. So. <laughs> Uh, Craig, who did Chernobyl, our showrunner, um, uh, everything is is science to him. And and any time there was any sniff of bullshit, uh, yeah. it's that's wrong. You know, yeah. any any sort of Hollywood lighting, anything that felt fake, uh, hated it. So it wasn't a job where we were worried about uh, seeing things. It was a job where we were worried about seeing too many things. It was yeah. always less is more. So yeah, I mean, from memory in that, that scene in particular. Um, where normally I would have had tons of little hidden lights and all kinds of little things to make sure we can always see her on the walk. I, I pretty much had nothing. I, I was using the torch. We she had, did it. she did it. She had the torch. <laughs> we, we had someone with a polyboard walking off camera, so she was she was playing with the polyboard to bounce the light back into her her face. Mm. Um, you know, and we did various versions with more and less flare, mm. but it was incredibly a, a lot of it. Again, it's very simple. It was how do we create a, a, an environment that feels like we've found it and it's real and it's mm. it's got some some sort of cinematicness to it, but also it doesn't feel fake. Mm. Again, mission accomplished. <laughs> um, talk a little bit about Pedro and Bella and it being quite early in the shoot and them still getting to know each other. How long did it take uh, Nick Offerman and Murray Bartlett to get on the same page? How long did it take to foster that chemistry? Um, it's difficult to say because they didn't have rehearsal. They they um, they met for first time they met would be coming out of trailers, doing the wig testing and all of those sorts of things that they have to do. And then there was a night we had a dinner somewhere, yeah. and we all got on and everyone was friendly and smiles and whatever. And at that point, uh, it was weird because like you sort of expected Murray to be like Murray. And then I didn't know who Nick Offerman would be in real life, but it felt like they were actually a really even match in terms of how they were. And, and like honestly, the level of heart that Nick Offerman has is phenomenal. And um, so all of this was coming out, but that's all we got. Then the next day, they were on set. I can't remember which outfits or which, which version of them they were, but it was literally hit the ground running. But... For a massive show like this, we were mostly filming two-handers in fields or in, in, uh, in, in you know, streets and in, in sets. And that made it become all, all of a sudden incredibly intimate and incredibly focused. And I think that's what really helped as well. It wasn't like we were fighting, literally fighting clickers or anything else for, for attention. It was just all about us. And that's why we both talked about it as being this little indie project mm -hmm. that just fits in the middle of a massive multi-million pound HBO project. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I know that you talked about this version of Bill and his backstory, how he probably had a difficult relationship with his mother, how he didn't fully find himself before meeting Frank. What sort of conversations were you having with Nick about bringing some of those elements into his performance? Um, honest, honestly, this is a great thing. You know, we've, we've all read a lot of scripts and every now and again you read a script that you go, this is perfect i mean lucky enough i've been lucky enough to work with russell t davis as well and it's similar you pick it up and you're like you don't say where where you know i can't go wrong because you can mm -hmm. but it's so detailed there's so much on the page uh we all had what craig well it was there right we all sort of discussed i think we know what we're doing because craig has been so thorough not over or underwritten it's all there also these are moments that have been deliberately chosen by craig to tell that story. Like, for example, we go from the first time they get into bed together, there's a hard cut, not if you watch on Now TV, unfortunately, but there's a hard cut to, their, to the door coming, you know, flying open. He's like, I can't bear you sometimes. And that's like, that's smart. That's like, that's relationships. And we know so much in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. So it was, lots of it was there. We did discuss a few ideas, um, Murray, a bit of that backstory, but it didn't matter. 
You know, we could make up a whole thing about who Frank was before he came, but but lo for lots of reasons it didn't matter because the Frank who stands in front of Bill is a completely different Frank to that person. Mm. So much has happened, so much has changed. Everyone's past is is irrelevant. Rich, literally living in the moment. So, so yeah. And I think I think the thing about the mum was just something we played around with, just because it was definitely her house, and mm. you wouldn't have put the two together. So it was just something to think about. I put a picture of mum and dad. They weren't they weren't mum and dad, but there was two people standing together in the in the past. Mm. So I put that in as well, just so again it sort of beds that all in and squeaky doors and sort of swinging doors and things like that, which feel less Bill and more her. But, but yeah, it was, it was all there. Awesome. Um, that first dinner scene is so great. Uh, I love it. One of the reasons why Murray Bartlett's reaction to eating good food for the first time in two days, it feels so authentic. When it comes to scenes like this, I'm always curious, how many times did you do that scene and how much did Murray have to eat? <laughs> I don't it's a year and a half ago now. That's a difficult question. <laughs> yeah, September uh, 21, mm, wow. we shot this. 200-day uh, shoot, of which I was only 20 days. Mm. Um, so, yeah, they were tired at the end of that. But, <laughs> yeah. um, was that the first day we've done? It might have been. Wow. It might have been the first day. It might have been. They don't, they don't, um, they don't, I don't over go, I don't do it a lot. I mean, we talk a bit and we, we, we prepare ourselves and I don't want to waste anybody's time. So I don't tend to like keep going relentlessly through it. I think a, a part of what I have to do is make sure we are all capable of doing what we need to do. And there's no sort of edge or, or uncomfortable feelings and all of those sort of stuff. People want to come to work and they enjoy them, their time there. And I mean, it was a massive, massive crew. As I say, that was a strange thing. It was like a 250 crew servicing two actors in mm. a small room. Mm. And, and that could be... Uh, that could be very uncomfortable. Yeah. And Craig's energy is phenomenal as well. I mean, Craig, sometimes I would have liked him to have the idea before I'd said let's move on to the next scene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, he is so in it. He's so part of it, living and breathing and understanding it. And, and like you said, the first thing you said is, when did you know that this was going to be successful? And one of those moments was when I looked to my left and my right and everybody was crying. Mm. And I'm like, oh, this, yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm cold as anything, so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't feel it. But, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> one thing I just remember with the blocking of that table scene, I'm pretty sure it was the first thing we did because I remember the light fell on the table. Remember that? Anyway, um, <laughs> it, it was interesting blocking for that scene, I seem to recall, was we were blocking two scenes because we had the last meal in mind as well. And we knew we, yes. wanted, to, we, knew we wanted him to come out of the kitchen the same way. We wanted the well, same look. To, the yes, plate goes down. Next week yeah, and, and that physical relationship, obviously, 16 yeah. years together has yeah. changed. But it was, there was a lot of this has to work for this scene. It's mm. a bit of a sort of meet cute uh, mm. in this world. But it also has to work at the end with all of that. Yeah. extra meaning mm -hmm. so. and it's very nice when you watch those reaction videos that you sent me <laughs> and um, somebody says something like oh and they're sitting closer together it's like oh yeah 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 so it, it pays off <laughs> it's like I've seen someone cry because of the plate being moved yeah. you know oh, uh, yeah. that broke somebody yeah. Yeah. How many reaction videos have you watched that? Oh, it's really <laughs> sad. I went down, I didn't even know about these things. Um, yeah. I got to the point where I was watching a reaction video of a reaction video, and I was like, I, I need to get a life and move on. Yeah. But, but it, it, they're fascinating. I mean, like, I've never had a thing like this before. And, and mm. seeing people, it's like anthropology. It's just like mm -hmm. seeing someone react in real time, and you can see their eyes to something. We talk so much about what we do and how it's going to affect people. And yeah. seeing it like that is just Honestly, it's, a, amazing. it's been unique. I know that... Uh, some, I've never done a Thrones, but some people, they used to do live watch-ins of that. And obviously mm. with various huge events in that show, there's evidence of people reacting to that. But they tended to be one moment. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, it kicks off. And everyone's like, whoa! And that, <laughs> that's the moment. Whereas this was 70, whatever, five minutes mm. of those reactions. Mm -hmm. And what I love the most is that a lot of those people whose, whose uh, trade is to react to things, mm. great job, um, <laughs> is, uh, is, 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 is they were surprised. They did not expect what was coming yeah. and I couldn't quite form the words that they're, sp they're supposed to say oh this is really great because or oh I'm the, but they couldn't speak mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so it's a win yeah, absolutely um the piano scene follows after that first table scene watching that for the first time was a really interesting experience for me because I'm watching this and I'm being very cautious I'm like Bill I'm like why is this guy and you were flipping the script in such a big way I'd, I'd known the game so I was like what's what's going on here so there's a shot where you're quite zoomed in on Bill and I'm like, is Frank going to come into the shot and strangle Bill from behind? That, that, that's what I was thinking in that moment. It's such a 
big moment for this episode because it's when the dynamic between them really starts to shift. How did you go about capturing that shift in dynamic in that moment, Evan? That, that, was, one, that was one where, on a project like this, I, I, I think it's my job, my approach at least, is, is to take a back seat. It's to, mm -hmm. to absolutely not get in the way. Uh, that's, a, that's absolutely a, a performance scene. And so what we did is, is make sure we had three cameras. We cross shot and we had a two shot. Mm -hmm. and, and we staged it in a way, and, and I'd lit it in a way. It was front lit, actually, but we lit it in a way where we wouldn't get camera shadows, but we could give them the space to perform that entire piece as one, um, which is what they did. They, they yeah. sang and they performed live. The, the, the audio there is what we got on, on set. So it, it was definitely a case of I just have to stay out of the way, let them perform, and let's see if magic happens. And if it does, let's hope we've got everything we need in yeah. one take. Um, I don't remember how many times we did it, but it, did, it wasn't many. It wasn't many. I feel like take two was yeah. like it. I, that's my memory. I mean, but. also Craig had a pre very prescriptive um, way that he wanted uh, Nick to sing that song. Mm. And we had some little... Uh, that's one thing we did do. We did music lessons to sing because Murray was being taught to do it badly and, and Nick was being taught to do it well. Mm. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's not a that's not a snide comment. But he <laughs> he he was saying I need some help here, but but also Craig's uh, if if he doesn't mind me saying Craig was a little bit too prescriptive, and I thought I well, I said to Nick, look, just just sing it with all you've got, you know, all the meaning you've got. But the lessons had helped, and the ideas he was he knew where he was going, but it was just like just just love it, and mm -hmm. and that's what he did. And those three cameras helped, yeah. and I do I do remember you saying or we discussed the fact that we should be looking in completely the opposite direction because it's prettier. But then again, that, of course, it didn't, that's no way you would have shot it. But, um, you know, we tried to be as minimal as possible with three cameras in front of two actors, mm. which is not easy, but, but it definitely felt like that. It felt like we were as minimal yeah, as possible. Yeah, and it, it is a, a lot of this episode for me was, was really getting into, like, the philosophy of my job, actually, because, mm. cause, like you say, had we been on the other side of the line, we would have been far side key backlit, and it would have been aesthetically prettier. Mm. But I think that's such a beautiful scene, but I'm using the mm. word in a not a surface level you know it's a beautiful mm -hmm. scene because of their performances and yeah. the magic we captured so mm -hmm. the, the was, fact the lighting could have been a bit better is sort of silly <laughs> in a there, scene there like was that. one other scene the scene where they sit together um, quite far apart and it's where bill's saying i can't do it and he's in the chair mm -hmm. saying i want you to love me love, love me the way i want you to mm -hmm. and that was a bit of a thing because we'd found a nice spot for them to go, which was actually a mimic. And actually, it didn't work. It was stupid. It, it, we all have stupid ideas. But we were going to sit them on the, uh, on the piano stool again. Yeah. And that's where they were going to have that conversation. Well, not both of them, but on that stool. Yeah. And it was Craig that stepped in and went, no, 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 it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. And then it was quite a big thing. And we literally had them facing a wall with, mm. you know, you still made it look beautiful, by the way. But again, didn't matter. Mm. It didn't matter because all we were there to do was put the cameras in the right place to get those reactions. Mm. And, and, and at that point as well, it was quite clear we were there to catch it, mm -hmm. you know, be there, be ready, and not, not overcomplicate it. Yep. Yeah. Out of all the amazing feedback you received for this episode, where does making Linda Ronstadt trend on Twitter rank for you? <laughs> <laughs> She's not getting any money. No. What? I've just read this today. She's not going to get any of the money. I don't know why. From streaming. Uh, yeah, like f from Spotify and whatever. She's, Somebody she's must own her, right. her row. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to get a GoFundMe for her. <laughs> um, it's a, uh, yeah, anyway, that's, that's I, I, I don't, I think that's always the pinnacle, isn't it? If you can get a track trending. Um, well, actually, Ron, Ron Swanson sobbing was uh, a great Twitter trending thing as well. I missed that one. That was in the US. That was the one that, that we got. And yeah, um, so amazing, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a number of really beautiful, intimate scenes with Bill and Frank. I wanted to talk about working with intimacy coordinators. Mm. What sorts of conversations were you having with them about the choreography and about where the camera should be in those moments? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd, I, I'd come into this from another show where intimacy coordination was, a, was paramount, and that was my first time on It's a Sin. And I felt, um, 
know, rejuvenated in some ways because I'd, I'd done a few other things in the past where it felt like you were just thrown to the lions and it's like, mm. go and make that sexy. And nobody gives, apart from you and I or whoever else is in our position, no one else seems to give a shit. And it's like, you've got two n naked actors no guidance, no ideas, no you know, and, and I I had I had the worst of times, and that show will remain nameless, and then I had it's a sin, and it was fantastic to have those people around and with us, and they did a phenomenal job, and I think that was very early days in that career, which is now fully flourishing, and so when it came to this, it was like um, I did get a brownie point at one point because the intimacy coordinator was called in, and she went. Uh, Peter said everything actually, so um, thank you very much. <laughs> and she came up to me at the end. She said, "I've ne I've never had a director no say all that. They don't. They just don't do it." So this is, you know, I'm not blowing my own trumpet. I'm just saying, I learnt. I learnt how good it can be, and mm. so I just applied it. And uh, and and yeah, that's just the only way to do it. <laughs> uh, Evan, camera work in, in that scene, in those scenes, can you talk about that? Uh, simplicity again. Mm. Um, we wanted a one kind of. Uh, we did start that and, way, didn't yeah, we? Um, yeah. And, we and also, remember, we, we had all these ideas about ways of developing into something, especially mm. trying to not cut. Mm. Uh, there is only one cut, I think, actually, yeah, anyway. But anyway, in the main, the main bit. But mm. um, but then we weren't allowed track and dolly, so no. we were told off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I did I did get a bit more indulgent with the lighting in that scene. Um, I, I it think it made, warm it made nice. thematic yeah. sense. There, there was justification for it. But again, it was about a sensitive environment. Um, there was a really interesting thing with Nick that I found quite moving. That He, he was so out, outside of his, his comfort zone, I guess, mm -hmm. of what he's used to doing that... I felt, for, for all of his, he's such an amazing guy in every way, uh, so funny, he was nervous. And, mm. and I felt those nerves in the room and I saw his hand yeah. you know, tingling a little bit. Yeah. And I think that all of that played into his performance and it's perfect for that scene. So again, you just don't want to lose that. It's one of those things like if someone's got a crying scene and you do a rehearsal and the tears yeah. are already coming, you just mm. need to be quick. And, and mm -hmm. it felt like that. It felt like, let's not mess around here. Let's, yeah. let's get it while it's, it's great. Yeah. I know it's still early in 2023, but I feel confident in saying that there won't be a better scene that I see this year to do with strawberries <laughs> than what I see in yeah. this episode. Because my gosh, um, what are your memories of shooting that scene? And was Nick Offerman's giggle, was that written into the script or was that just purely Nick? It's all, all him. Um, the, it's everything. I, I, the, the reason I think that worked so well, I can't remember if it was scripted at that sunset. But we certainly decided that was the right thing to do. We we were careful we not to get too magic houry too often. But that yeah. was one where we were like, we really can do this we in a fifteen minute yeah. window. So let's. So uh, I posted about it today. Like uh, we we plotted out because we yeah. built that whole town. All of the, you know the whole town was built uh, in a field basically, um, mm. and all the interiors were on a soundstage. And for that, you know, the two of us before we built anything, we're, we're doing the jog yeah. into yeah. where they would land. Mm. Yes. And it was a case of where is the sun at Magic Hour and mm. Where should the house behind them be, and where should the strawberries be, and sort of working backwards from that. So yeah. that is a classic example as well of not having quite enough time to actually be there mm. at sunset to mm. check where it really was mm. and how how <laughs> bold it was because yeah. it wasn't. And yeah. We were looking at going, oh, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> but but it's, it doesn't matter. Mm. You know, it's beautiful. And then, of course, everyone might say, I should say, it's exactly what we wanted. <laughs> um, but we expected a much lot more, you know, bigger, mm. and it would have been, you know, perhaps too sentimental. Mm. So. Mm. Uh, it was what it was, but yeah, the, that works, I think, because we had two cameras mm. and we had mm. 20 minutes or whatever, 15 minutes, and that mm. they were, everyone was, you know, ready, prepared, yeah. mm -hmm. and it just happened. It was great. One thing I can say about the giggle is when we went for dinner with them when they first landed, uh, Nick was sat next to me and he ate some steak and he did that giggle. <laughs> so so that, that's the real Nick Offerman. Where, where's the steak and where? I need to try the steak. <laughs> 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 I'm going to throw it out to questions in just a few minutes, so if you have one, please raise up your hand and the roving mic will find you. Um, Evan, I wanted to talk to you about capturing love away from the sex scenes because you capture it so well and there's so much heart in this episode. I think about scenes about holding hands, exchanging meaningful looks, all of that comes through the screen in such a beautiful, powerful way. What conversations were you having with Nick and Molly about crafting that and capturing that? Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to mention Neil Bryant at this point. Oh, yeah. Who's our operator, A operator, and Steadicam operator, although we didn't do much Steadicam. Well, we did, because he's, he's in the, 
behind the scenes video doing it. Well, yeah, but, ZG. ZG, yes. sorry, sorry. But um, <laughs> it's very important, that relationship, because it's not just about us. It's about the person who's right there in the moment behind the camera. And Neil could not have been uh, the more perfect choice, a more perfect yeah. choice, mm -hmm. because of his sensibilities and his, 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 his craft, obviously, but his just gentleness. Mm -hmm. And um, that sort of stuff really matters to me, you know, in a set generally. And I just think the, the whole vibe, you know, you always set the tone when you take on mm. another job. And I just think the whole vibe was really geared towards this thing being the best it could be. Yeah. And, uh, and that all comes down to those, you know, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's great. But <laughs> it's like, you know, but it's, every, it's keeping everybody doing that, everybody doing that. Yeah, mm. and it's it's instinct, isn't it? So much mm. of it. And I tried to liberate Neil, our A operator, to, 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 if you feel like you want to go for the thing, go for the thing, you know? Mm. And there was a lot of instinct involved. And I use, uh, I don't operate it. He's our A operator. I use yeah. comms. So I had the ability to long distance mm. say, I'll do the thing. Mm. And I found <laughs> often I would go to, and it'd be like, he's done it. Yeah, he's <laughs> all the time. Yeah, like yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he was so tuned in with the music <laughs> of the scene that, yeah. um, so much of that stuff is mm. is loose, is improvised. You, mm. It happens, and and you tag it. And I mean, we. I also felt like we were part of a time on that show's development mm. where it became liberated. Mm. There was something that we maybe did, or or timing, or whatever. That I think when you start a show, it's crazy, and it was definitely crazy on this. And then there was a whole you know flux of change and th things going. Slightly awry, let's just say, mm -hmm. and then, uh, and then, and then we come on, and we're <laughs> hilarious. No, but then, but we, 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 yeah, I do felt that was part of it. I think Neil sort of came alive, mm -hmm. and he was like, "I can, this is great," and a lot of people felt like that. And we were telling a story that seemed to matter to a number of people. And you know, yeah. I mentioned the crying. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, this is good. Let's start at the back, and then we'll move forward. Hello, everyone. Uh, first things first, gentlemen, I mean, congratulations. That was a brilliant episode. I mean, it was a great watch. And thank you also to BSC for putting all this together. I think the question that's really on everyone's mind is, is Pedro Pascal as handsome in real life? I mean, <laughs> let's be Definitely real. Definitely not, no. Is he not? I mean, he looks good considering he's had his well, head squashed. I'm, let's be real. I, I say that the best thing about it was shooting that scene where they all have dinner because yeah. he came to set without all of the grey hair stuff on for Joel. And I, and I yes, he's very handsome. But, <laughs> but, but when he came in with that, I was like, ooh. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a little bit more special. And also, Anna, I'd worked with Anna years and years ago, mm. and I only had seen her on set with the bruised eye and all of the shit all over her. Mm. And, and then she came come looking fantastic. And that got people moved. Because mm. they were like, I saw one meme which said, oh, my God, they've been together 16 years. Mm. And people would work all that out. And it's mm. just, yeah. So, uh, yes, he's very handsome. Um, <laughs> but the, my first question, what stupid geek, my first question was, are you going back to do The Mandalorian? <laughs> so like, well, nothing to do with Joel and Ellie, but anyway. Well, at least he wasn't wearing a helmet on set. At least he wasn't wearing a helmet on set. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Thanks, guys. <laughs> You've got a gentleman at the front here. Was the show that you were working on with Anatole Fringe by any chance? No, it was called Mistresses. Okay. It was a cool. long time ago. <laughs> um, it's all right, I can, I can say that. Sure. Um, great show. I mean, I haven't seen the other two episodes, but it stands on its own. My question is about lighting and pyrotechnics, because one of the most impressive scenes in the, in the whole Ooh. sequence is actually when he's going out in there. So I'm just curious to know, in terms of the perspective of pyrotechnics, I mean, how much is, do you rely on the actual brightness of the pyrotechnics and how much is lit? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so that, that was a big one for us. Um, like I said, the, the exterior town was built, the interiors were on a soundstage, but we knew that we wanted, uh, from when Frank comes down the stairs, we didn't want to force a cut there. We wanted the ability for him to come down the stairs, go into the room, look out the window, get the gun, outside, rescue, back inside, play out that scene. So we built a little L-shaped corner of the set on location. Two walls, we had two walls and a front yeah. door. Um, so I knew, that, uh, I knew that I was gonna be lighting the whole environment, it had to work for the interior and the exterior. In this world of The Last of Us, I knew this was a fire attack, it was in the script, all of these flamethrowers. Um, it felt um, inauthentic to use moonlight. I, I, I really didn't want to get into moonlight. I wanted to just use that fire, use the sort of richness of all that fire. But we also knew we wanted another element, so that's where the storm yeah. idea came in. And I, I shot this film a million years ago that no one's seen called Chicken. Um, 
AJ's seen it. Hey, AJ. Um, <laughs> and in Chicken, we had a scene where a caravan burns down in a field at night, uh, and it started to rain just naturally. Mm. And we had this sort of beautiful window of, okay, it's pouring with rain. Do we just go for it? And we just went for it, and we just shot. And I just love what happened in mm. that serendipity of the weather. Mm. And so I sort of wanted to recreate that. And, mm. and so th that's where the rain towers came from. And the flashes of lightning were, were my way of just making sure that mm. if I knew that behind them I wasn't going to have much source, frankly. So I wanted the ability to just pick them out with little flashes of lightning. Had the gaffer next to me pressing the button, I could just signal and, and hit it, hit it. If I knew I needed a little backlight, he could just hit the button, which was great. Um, but it was camera testing. That was the only thing in the episode where I, I just said, we absolutely have to test this. We've got to see how much light I'm going to get from those flamethrowers. Um, I need to know if we can shoot this authentically like that. How many can SFX give us? How much do I have to supplement? So we hid sky panels everywhere, <laughs> uh, just everywhere. Uh, sky panels galore, anywhere you, you, you couldn't see. There was, you know, on the ground, just on the floor, just projecting into the bushes, doing fire effects. Um, but, uh, but yeah, 80% of the light from the fire was just from the fire, um, at a 2.8 for it's worth. <laughs> yeah, I'm always fascinated by that because night scenes and as somebody who wants to direct in the future, I'm just curious to know about it. So, mm. you know, it was interesting then. So thank you. The, the great thing about doing the test was that everybody panicked. Yeah. And so when they said Four. you can only have 10 yeah. fires, mm. they all went, no, and they, need, they double that. Because yeah. the test was at a T4. Ah, <laughs> there you go. That's how you do it. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Yes. Do you want to yeah, so, so first of all, congratulations, incredible Thank episode. Um, so the question I had for you um, was uh, what sort of challenges do you both um, sort of come across? Um, because the ga because like, the game itself is um, really popular and uh, really cinematic. So what were the sort of challenges... Oh, thank you. Um, what were the sort of challenges you had um, with sort of adapting um, like a really popular, really cinematic game into um, a television series? I think it's only fair that we mentioned Craig, Craig Mason because we didn't write it. Um, but, but Neil and Craig, I don't know when you started before me, but Neil and Craig sat me down and said, look, here's, way, here's how we see this. And Neil has said something recently in inter an interview, which I think is perfect. He said, if, if, if what we are going to do is better than the game, then that's when we deviate. If it's not better than the game, then we stick with the game. Mm -hmm. And on this particular occasion, it was the first opportunity for Craig to say, I, I can do this with Bill and Frank. And he pitched it to Neil, and Neil was like, amazing, this is what we do. He was nervous, of course he was, but he knew that it was better and, and deeper and, and the whole point of an adaptation. I said, you know, if, if it was a full-on shot for shot game uh, recreation it would be the most boring computer game in history because you can't play it mm -hmm. all you can do is watch it so of course we had to do more to it I felt less pressured because the episode was so, di so different mm -hmm. I didn't think as much about the game there were elements where we fell into it mm -hmm. like the shot of the car through the window and, I, and then I think you said this is exactly the same as in the game. So we Googled it, and it was. So honestly, it was that way around. <laughs> and, um, and that just happened. Oh, I think one of the... It's not in the episode, by the way. It is? Not the one, not the two shot. It is? I don't think it is. Isn't it? <laughs> Let's fight. <laughs> okay. I think I we should watch it again and check. I can tell you why as well, it. but anyway. Why? In your cut. <laughs> Let's check. I, I thought I'd seen it. <laughs> well, maybe I did just get the grab from the day. We, yeah. We, we did a shot in that episode that's a hundred like perfect yeah. to the game. The problem was in the next episode, we've got the actual uh, scene. Who was the DP on the next episode? Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah. I'm pretty sure they, they took, took it, it out of this one Bastards. because we did it in the next one. But that, <laughs> okay. when that situation arose, like you say, like if ever we found ourselves forced in a way to do a shot from the game, mm -hmm. it was never like, yeah, we, if that's the shot, that's the shot. And we wouldn't... Um, we didn't go searching for it, but equally we didn't go, okay, well, they've done it, so we can't do that. We've Nobody got to do was better. Sitting on we just sort that. of went, well, clearly that's the camera's in the right spot then, mm -hmm. so that's let it be. Um, yeah. 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 I've spun you out saying it's not in the episode, haven't I? <laughs> no, I'm fine. Um, but things like the shirt, because we also had this big moment where they were going to get their outfits from the game, and so that was you know, obviously very important, T-shirt that Ellie wears. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm right in saying, it's all a bit of a blur, but I think I'm right in saying that it was our idea to put that shirt on Frank in a previous yeah. scene. Otherwise, it felt to me that um, it was too convenient. It's like, oh, here's mm -hmm. the hero shirt all of a sudden from nowhere. But 
Frank wore it in the scene where he comes out in the argument. And, and mm. yeah, some people reacted to that and sobbed as well. So that's yeah. great. <laughs> I bet. Yes, yeah, I have a question over here. Wait for the mic. Thanks. I just want to reiterate that's a really incredible episode. So thank you very much for <laughs> making it. Um, one detail that I really loved was the paintings of Bill mm. in the background. Um, so many different drawings and styles. I want to know how they were created and did you get to keep any? I didn't get to keep anything. No. No. <laughs> um, I've tried many times to keep things off sets. I tried to get a bit of the Crossroads Motel, which, if anybody cares, I did a thing called Nolly, which is all about Crossroads. And I was mm. like, I've got to have a pet at the Crossroads Motel. Didn't get it. Mm. Got burned. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, so we had, we had a number. So the, the condition... It was really tricky because the condition that Frank suffers from, we didn't want to name. It didn't need to be named. There were a, a few that we were thinking about, but we definitely took advice on what, what, what type of issue he would have or what type of painting that would create. And, and, the, and then, you know, so that, that, was, that was that part of it. We had a number of artists, I think, because we were up against it, even with a 20-odd plus million show, we were up against it. So we had a number of artists providing us with stuff. I think Murray provided some... Um, some hot picks that got painted. Mm -hmm. I think one of them is now doing the rounds, actually. Yeah, 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 with his, yeah. Anyway, um, and then <laughs> Bill, uh, Nick did the same thing. So they were, they were created in a style. We had to choose a style as well. And that was something that Craig was very well, uh, very involved in. And then I think, I think the thing that then happened that we were more in charge of was when we brought them, we put them into shots. Mm -hmm. Like that last shot of the camera coming through, that was always our idea. It, there was an idea and you'll know because you've seen all these things, but there was an idea to do it at the beginning of every episode. And I first said, I don't know how to do that, as there's nowhere for me to fit that in. It will feel odd. There is a place at the very end. And then all the other ones fell away, and ours stayed, and we'd always known that that was the way. But not just pulling back through the window, then it was like, why are we doing it? What can we put in? And that's when the picture and the flowers meant that's who they were. Mm. And... Uh, and yeah, that's one of that's Russell T. Davis's favourite moment. Not bragging, but um, <laughs> but but from a writer's point of view, he was saying, "How are you going to tie it back to the people you're there for? That's mm. their story. How do you tie it back to them?" And then the camera does that, and he was like, "Yes." So <laughs> I I did okay. Yeah, and all I was going to say, the art department on this were just remarkable Amazing. because just unbelievable. So much of it's in camera. They built that town for us. They mm. built another town. You know, this is a road trip series. You're always on the move and everything you see has to have 20 years of aging in it. So ev everything's built. There's no returning locations. So to facilitate that, it was the biggest art department I've ever seen. It was like a, a museum of people. And we had, uh, we had one production designer, John Pano, absolute genius, incredible. Uh, but we had an art director for every episode. We had an individual art director for each episode, and they had their own team. So it was remarkable the amount of people and talent uh, from all over the world coming in to do this. So for something like those pictures, you know, we had our own art department just for this episode, yeah. whilst another art department are, are doing the episode that she's Building in. a hotel full of yeah. water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then another art department working on the next episode, all under the guidance of one designer. It was, I've never had that system before, mm. and it was incredible. So it just meant a level of detail. Well, and, again, it uh, adds to that spe special feeling, the special feature nature of why this stands out. And and it carries on. I mean, I don't know if you did. You do four and five with one team, or was that two different? Four and five, we did shoot together yeah. with one team. But that was true. a, it's a yeah. two-part part yeah. thing, really, isn't it? But yeah, yeah. Anyone else have any other questions? Yes. Wait for the mic. Everyone wants a drink. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think they just want some fresh air. <laughs> so this was an amazing episode. I love the game, obviously, but this was a very very good episode and uh, it expands the game quite quite a lot because some of these scenes are not in the game obviously um, <clears throat> so I was wondering how was your interaction with uh, with Naughty Dog and, and Neil Druckmann you know how much did you did you work together yes um, he so obviously uh, the boring technical thing is that this was episode four uh, but it was shot out of sequence as episode three. They'd already shot episodes one and two. Mm. Anyway, um, so Neil and uh, Craig had been on the ground a lot, getting uh, getting it to that point. And a lot of discussions had, had, had been happening about the world, what we do see, what we don't see, and whatever. And I was expecting that. I mean, I've worked on other big budget um, 
or, or big branded shows like Marvel and everything, there's always a, an attitude, there's always a, a, an opinion, right? You can't deviate from certain things. But I was quite surprised with episode three that Neil, Neil was always there, as in not on set, but, but part of the meetings. And he was really gen generous, mm -hmm. you know, with his prized possession. Um, but I do think that's partly because when I got there, hard work, the hard heavy lifting had been done. Mm. So um, I don't remember him telling us there were no rules from him at all. It was always, he was always there to ask, like it, sometimes there'd be a question, um, a motivation. Yeah. Who are these people? Why do they do what they do? And it'd yeah. be like, let's phone Neil. And he's got 10 years of all the research, yeah. all the art department. He just, he was an encyclopedia of what's happened before. And that, tell you, I've just, you just reminded me, there were questions about the interim period, about where Tess and Joel had been, like mm -hmm. what was their life journey in those years? Because we've never, never known. And we were like, I think it may have been Anna that actually asked this question. Um, Pedro just went with it. But I think Anna was like trying to dig, dig, dig. And, and what well, I didn't know, it's like, it could be anything. But yeah, I think literally one call to Neil, it was like reams and reams of notes about <laughs> what he thought they had been doing, how far they'd taken that relationship and what it had provided. Um, and I think we also discussed something to do with those raiders because they mm -hmm. were quite new in, in the, on the scene. And yeah. who were they? What type of people were they? And obviously they just turn up and get burnt. But, mm. but it was nice to understand there was more to it and yeah absolutely knew everything yeah Total uh, Bible. and even from like a practical perspective for me with lighting it would be okay we're going to a new town um the street lights don't work anymore right right <laughs> right right no they don't okay let's check with neil they don't and, and yeah. then in the case you really get into the science behind every light fixture is 20 years old so mm. you know do batteries last 20 years you know all of these kind of questions well, that's what we he, found he's because batteries there. don't right car batteries don't last and i think we had a big conversation about gas yeah about how long the gas pressure would last. Yeah, yeah. And I think there is a, it, yeah. you know, or whether it, if, whether it actually lasts that long, yeah. you know, unmanned or mm. anything. But yeah. we, we just went ahead and did it anyway. Well, he, he'd always done the homework yeah. to say, this is the reality, this is the facts, I think we can stretch it to this. Yeah. Great, there's your answer. So he was, he was wonderful for that, yeah. yeah. I think I have time for a couple of more questions, yes. Just on that, um, I noticed in one of the scenes there was so much toilet paper left. One when second, we had the one second, wait for the mic. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm interested where this is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just on that, I noticed in um, one of the scenes, um, Ellie was taking all the toilet paper, and there was toilet paper left. You know, when we had a pandem pandemic here, <laughs> the toilet paper went like that. So, um, no, uh, just, yeah. Well, yeah. we this is pre pandemic. No, it wasn't pre pandemic. We were all bloody masked, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, he's, he's a builds. A, they, they, they trade, right? Yeah. Uh, they they store. They hoard. They Are you trade, thinking about so. when Ellie takes it? Because yeah. Ellie at the end, yeah. she's, the paid, end, she's yeah. filling. Well, you kid, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and there's. I think you sort of established that the outer Massachusetts where this is has been cleared. So when he goes to Home Depot, he's like, break the doors, walk in. It's my supermarket. It's my um, B and Q now. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, uh, it was Lowe's. Do you remember that? They CGI'd yeah. it to Home. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I think he he's the practical hoarder, and they uh, yeah, you know. That's an interesting question. <laughs> and I, I love that word where he says, I, I'm a survivalist. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Any more questions? Yes, wait for the mic. Oh, no. There's two. He's oh. got the mic. He's got the mic already. Sorry, should I, should I go? Um, you cool. two seem to have quite a good rapport. I um, can't stand him. <laughs> so I'm just curious. If there was a real-life infected apocalypse and you both ended up in a house, what do you think would happen? Is this a question about turning me? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, well, in a never say never in an apocalypse, yeah. Peter. <laughs> I mean, would are you asking whether we would be Bill and Frank and which one's which? <laughs> um, I'll be Frank. Um, I, I, what was the question again? Sorry. <laughs> Um, I would look after him. He's very special. And, and honestly, um, it, it's, you know, we're always meeting new people, new families all the time. And I took the job on because it was the last of us and then the bonus of the script. And then I didn't know who was going to be my DP. It turned out to be him. And, and uh, we had a really good time. And sometimes you meet people and you just click straight away. And, and that makes it a lot easier. So um, 
and and we just did we just saw it the same way and the show the game rather as well we had that in our psyche um and and you know we didn't take ourselves too seriously i think that's also good. we're fun we're fun yeah, yeah. available for weddings bar mitzvahs <laughs> I cannot wait for this Peter and Eben episode of The Last of Us. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be epic. Uh, I think we had a question. Yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be as good as that last one. <laughs> um, uh, I thought it was perfect. Perfect episode of TV. Um, so congrats, guys, and all involved. Um, I, think, I did hear that there was a, a two-hour version of it when you guys, um, when you guys you first... set the record first straight so, yeah. I, I've... I've I've already given that exclusive to BAFTA this afternoon. <laughs> um, well, look, according, I, I've never heard of it. Um, you know the process. There is a lot of footage, and then there's an assembly, and then that assembly. So there's a, there's a raw assembly, let's say, and then that raw assembly becomes the editor's cut, which they give to me. That cut was 77 minutes. And um, I was terrified because I'm like, what the fuck have I done? It's like 63 pages. It wasn't massive. It wasn't that long anyway. So I thought, you know, I have a, a reputation of spreading. <laughs> and uh, I, just, I just thought, I've got to get 17 minutes out of this or HBO are going to kill me. Mm. And it was impossible. And I had Timothy Good, who also deserves a mention because he not only did this episode and made a brilliant job, he saved the rest of the series. <laughs> and not saved it, but he's just very, very good. And again, the place he came from was the right place, the heart from here. And so we got going, and there's not many days in America. You get five, four, five. I think I had five. And um, so we got it down to 72, thinking that that was the right thing to do without you know, getting rid of all the best bits. And then, uh, as you see, three minutes went back in. So I'm very pleased about that because uh, I didn't want to take them out in the first place. There is a ra rather beautiful shot. The only thing I can remember is that it's completely missing. There are moments within scenes, but there's, there's a bit where Ellie is walking through behind Joel. There was a more, more parts to that journey. And she uh, sees moths, like, in the half sunlight and whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she plays with them. They're all going to be CG. And she just does this thing with her hand. Maybe it was too expensive. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But basically, she does this thing with her hand in a beautiful, beautiful light. And again, lucky enough to be in a position where we picked the spot, the angle, the time of day. And they went, mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. That's what you can do. That doesn't always happen. So, and we got it. And it was beautiful. And that's not in there. But um, <laughs> that, that was the only thing I can... Yeah. seriously say is not there. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't think... know where the two hours is coming from. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I think that was, yeah, rounded up. And like you say, it was an early cut. I mean, this is... Yeah, it might, have, been, it. It yeah. might have pushed 80 before Tim tightened it all up, but yeah. that's yeah. still not two yeah. hours. I can't do it. And it's one of the, like, like, you know, like Scorsese always said, like, he'll turn in a five-hour cut of something, but he's like, I don't ever want anyone to see that version. Like, I've, that's I've, not what I you watched want. Avatar, and honestly, <laughs> I, was, I was willing for death. Um, al although, although we both saw uh, Babylon equally long, and part, we were terrified watching it as well, but... Mm. I didn't mind that. So again, maybe it's about how good it is. Maybe that's what matters. Yeah. Oh, who would have known? Who would have known? <laughs> if anybody wants to jump on Twitter and start the release the whore cut hashtag now, yeah. I think that'll be fine. I think fine. if you write whore cut in anywhere, um, <laughs> you might get in some trouble. Uh, last, last question for you. Uh, season two of The Last of Us is going to be coming. Have you guys already made the calls? Have they made the call? <laughs> I'm terrified of season two. Like, I, I think mm. it's, um, oh God. I mean, I think what Craig and everyone pulled off adapting this season is a sort of miracle, actually, uh, just based on the source material and how well it's gone down. Um, part two is, is twice as big, twice as difficult. I, I'm mm. really scared of it, um, um, but I'd do it. In a there's heart. another funny story because I hadn't played the second game and Don't I... Don't spoil it for everyone. No, 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 I won't spoil anything. <laughs> Who all, here all... has not played the second game? Oh, wow. Well, quite, okay. quite a few. Okay. <laughs> so I bought the game two. I thought, maybe I should do my homework. I should play game two, and then if anyone asks me questions, I'll know what the answer is. Didn't play it. And uh, then I got to meet him. He said, are you playing game two? And I'm like, no, 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 I haven't. He said, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll let it go. And then about a few days later, what, what, what's game two? What's special about game two? No, I can't tell you. can't tell you. 
and then that's red, red, red rag to a bull for me. So I was like, please tell me what goes on. No, I can't. I'll spoil it. Days and days and days <laughs> of this. And then he does tell me why it's a sheet. And I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. Wow. Um, so that completely threw me because I'm like, not, you know, the first game, if anyone's played it, it's relentless. And I took three or four goes. I had to have a break. Mm. I had to keep, keep stopping. So the, and then this. So I thought, okay, yeah, I'll come back if I can do that. <laughs> um, that's where I've left it. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, until that great day, we have the rest of season one and this incredible episode to be watched. And there, if, if you think that's, uh, well, that is probably the, the hardest it gets to watch emotionally, <laughs> but there is more. Sorry. There is more. <laughs> there is more. Uh, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for Peter Hall and Evan Thank Walter. you. Thanks for coming out. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.